man. <laughs> that is crazy. Um, no, don't make fake droid noises. Okay. Those will happen for real anyway. I still haven't fixed that about my phone. Um, droid. Thank you. Okay, so I've started recording. <coughs> okay. I'll be quiet. I'll be good. I'll be good. <laughs> no. Okay, so, everyone. I just got a message from a friend of mine. And it, it's regarding art. And I was recently in a lot of discussions about art. And I imagine that there are some people who... Uh, disagree with me about my stances on art in in one um, general sense, and then they they want to discount my art. It you know, kind of like an ad hominem attack. But uh, yeah, it's it's gonna fall flat on its face, and um, uh, I'll get to that. But basically, instead of uh, you know, standing their ground or 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 saying anything to my face or anything. I guess some people have have been talking behind my back without watching my videos, and they think that they have some sort of uh, point. So, my friend, who I will not name, um, wrote to me in, in a message saying. Uh, if they were to buy paintings in bulk, could they get a bulk discount? Um, also, there is a rumor going around that you trace everything. Will you dispel the rumor by making a video sharing your technique? I'd like to see that in any case. Heart, heart, heart. And I will read for you all my response to that. Which is, uh, well, not only do I trace uh, and use other mechanical aids that better artists don't use, um, I have said as much in ramble videos on this YouTube channel. Oh, and of course, I don't expect everyone to listen to like things for a whole hour, but I can tell you that previous to this video, I have said this. So if somebody thinks that it's a grand revelation and that they found something out, uh, no. I have said this openly. <laughs> okay? Um, well, that you cheat? Well, yes, I say that I cheat. That's what I call it, cheating. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. Uh, does anybody remember hearing me say that? Yeah, I disputed you on various reasons why that's not universally applicable. It's not universally applicable, okay? But it, but it works for me in the art sense. Oh, yeah, because in art there are no rules. We established yeah. that in the 60s. What mean we, chemotherapy? You, I mean we you, as in our species. Yeah. Okay, um... That's that's different than the royal we that I normally expect from redcoats with accents. Yeah, well, what do you expect with that colonial chip you have on your shoulder and nurtured daily? <laughs> Anyways. Um, I go on to say in my response, um, every piece of mine that you see that is pure black and white, this is, this is an aid in, in finding out how much cheating I've done. If it's in pure black and white, um, it was either created by me on a computer or found in Google Images and then put to a canvas using mechanical aids and all sorts of different aids to aid me in this. Uh, starting with a ruler and then graph paper <laughs> and, you know, stencilizing and... Uh, what? Projecting and what? under light boarding and sorry, sorry. So th this travesty cannot go unremarked. What you use a ruler to cheat on straight lines? 
No, not not just straight lines. I use a ruler to uh, uh, measure the distance that I have between someone's eyes, and then use a ratio to get to the tip of their nose. So you that, mean you use a ruler for measuring? That's even worse. Well, if you get someone's face correct, then you can fuck up on on a whole bunch of the other things like their shirt and their hair, and nobody uh, notices how off a shirt or, or hair is, but you, they really want the eyes to be set just so apart with a, with a ratio with the forehead and, and where the lips are. So, yeah. So are, you, so are you telling me that you're applying scientific principles to art? Um, if you can call it a science, I call it uh, getting shit right at least well enough for people to be able to recognize what you're doing. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, by science, I mean perpetual. You know, sorry, not perpetual. Perceptual. Okay. Well, science of our perceptions and how they work. Headology, if you like. Uh, the science of proportion? Hmm. Anyways. Yeah, it's like so that would be geometry. Um, if you're having problems finding the image that uh, I made, or th that I put on canvas, if, if you're trying to make some sort of ponage, all right, um, half of the black and white images I actually created using a different image that was got, gotten it from all sorts of websites. But um, if, if you're looking for just the straight-up black-and-white thing that I stole, you might not find it. You might find it, actually. If somebody walked into my market and asked for, say, a Jimi Hendrix, which did happen recently, I'm going to go... Is that a euphemism? No. Oh, okay. It's not a euphemism. That's the, the, okay. They actually asked for Jimi Hendrix. I'm going to go okay. on... Uh, Google Images and see if somebody else has already provided all the work for me. So um, I will make it for them to order and take their ten dollars. And that's not a lot, and they leave happy, right? But if I take a picture and then share it and get like twenty up thumbs, you know, because people like what I did, and then somebody comes along and says, "Hey." That's not uh, an original thing. Um, no, it, it wasn't. And if that's your sticking point to uh, invalidate any other thing that I have said about art, then um, just know that I have already said it up front. Not just to, uh, you know, people in, in long, hour-long YouTube videos, but... Most anyone who asks about my technique at all, I've given, like, personal classes on how to, quote-unquote, cheat. You know? In tr true story, I can, I can give you references of my, quote-unquote, students. Um, some of them... Well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't class myself a student, but you did... Yeah, you can yeah. tell me blow by blow exactly how you do this shit. Yeah, anybody who's a friend of mine has heard it from the horse's mouth, and anyone who's spreading the rumor, um, yeah, it, it, whatever reason that they have for spreading it in rumor form instead of just getting it, you know, straight from me, uh, pretty much invalidates their. Uh, friendship status with me at this point. And I don't know who it was, but um, you should feel bad. Bad about yourself. Bad, bad, bad. Well, I wouldn't go that far. I, I want them to feel bad. Yeah, but you got an emotional investment, so that's understandable. I, I want someone to, like, knock the ice cream off their ice cream cone. That's how bad I want them to feel. Really, or do you want them to feel as bad as though they knocked somebody else's ice cream out of their ice cream cone deliberately? So, nobody's knocking my ice cream out of my ice cream cone. I charge ten dollars for that Jimi Hendrix. 
Sorry, you're likening Jimi Hendrix to an ice cream smooth cone now. Have what? you have you seen the way that I paint? It it does look like ice cream dripped on the canvas, kind of black ice cream. But anyways, um, I went on <laughs> to okay. to uh, Welcome say to the dark side of ice cream. Yeah, I went on to say whenever you see me paint in grayscale with uh, shades between black and white, that was painted actually with at least a novice level of skill on my part. I want to know, if, if you're saying that I trace things that are faded from black to white in a, in a grayscale fashion, how is that traced? If you have a method for tracing shading like that, please share with me because I want to cheat some more. You know, if there's an easier way to do it than what I've been doing, you know, I've actually had to learn how to paint to do this shit. So, any any painting that you see that's not purely black and white, um, no, it wasn't traced when you see that, that, that shading. It's like, you can tell what's traced and what's not. If, getting if, back, getting back to ice cream for a moment. What? You do realize that if you're the dark side with your black ice cream, then all of the stuff that's heading towards the light with the introduction of greys and what have you, that has to be the result of um, ice cream bowl influencing you, surely. Because his ice cream is always white. He has eaten the strawberry ice cream at me. Well, there you go. You're moving into color, aren't you? Yes. And that's my other point. There you go. If I am painting in color, how the fuck am I tracing that? Like, if you see different shades and blending and all that, I want to know how I'm tracing all that part, because um, I would like to cheat better, and if there's somebody out there with that technique, please give it to me, it's so that I can cheat, cheat. cheat some more. What? Just keep doing as you're doing. Tune into your spiritual side, your aesthetic side. My aesthetic side is not spiritual. My aesthetic side wants to sell paintings. Is it coming from your intellect, or is it coming from something else? I'm going to say intellect. Really? Yes, because... Uh, if I need something randomly done, um, and and I need just the right amount of flair and something, sometimes I just shake my hand and then put it to the canvas. Um, but it's a controlled shake. Um, I really do feel like most of my work is not tapping into this touchy-feely emotion side of things that other people like to tap into. I do okay. not. I do not feel like some of the other artists that that say that you know it's a, a spiritual, emotional uh, expression when they're well, when they're painting. Let me ask you a question. What's that? When your hand makes a mistake, yeah. When your accuracy is compromised, when you veer away from the empirical, analytical intellectual uh -huh. aspect of your design process. Do you correct the error or do you just say, ah, leave it and work around it? Uh, depends on the piece. Some pieces I feel are meant to have little mistakes like that and I leave them in all over and I create a lot of them on purpose. But some I think are meant to be more exact and I will paint over something you know, and try, or okay, try to work so if, it in. So if something has a mistake, even a deliberate mistake in it, is it intellectually accurate? In my case, I feel so. And, hmm. and the reason why is if you paint something they will come. No, 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 no that's no, a different no. movie, isn't it? Sorry. Yeah. If you paint something to look exactly like a photograph, 
if you were as accurate as possible and it looked like you know you were better than a Kodak picture you know mm-hmm. people would not see the the human hand in it and they would not want to buy it they would think that you just printed it out on a printer so mm-hmm. um, as far as intellectually accurate I'm not being accurate as to the original source of whatever I'm painting. I'm being accurate as to what people are going to buy off of a shelf. And what Mm -hmm. they're going to buy is something where it is exact where it needs to be and then has a lot of human error in it in other places that show that an actual human hand put an actual bit of paint to an actual bit of canvas. And that's mm. why it is so important to me sometimes to get the spacing of eyeballs, you know, and and the nose in proportion and the and the lips in proportion, as versus say whatever the shirt looks like. Right. So the, the face is what? so much more important than anything else. So your intellectual accuracy is being driven by the subjective appreciation of your target market. Yes. So would the um, acid test of how successful you've been in that portrayal be the um, subjective aesthetic appreciation of that buyer? Or it could be just a simple measure of how many people have bought my art and a ratio of how many people walk by it and buy something how many people don't. Right, so in addition to the aesthetic appreciation of the purchaser, you're also adding in a quantitative measure of how many people find this aesthetically pleasing. Yes. Okay. So and, and I will say that all of this attitude of 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 doing this in in an intellectual way without feeling, this covers at least ninety five percent of what I do. And okay, that you would concede that there is a five percent um, aesthetic abstract quality to what you do. Yeah, um, and it's normally compartmentalized on a different piece of art that I create, and. Uh, normally those things do not sell but I like to have a few of them up on my wall um, Mm -hmm. that are unrecognizable to people because if they recognize every single thing then they start to catch on to the marketing aspect to it so there needs to be something you know there that uh, is unrecognizable in a celebrity or fame sense Mm -hmm. um One more question. Yes. Um, In the context of what we were just talking about, Mm -hmm. how important is the um, principle, or how critical is the principle, I don't want you buying something until you've seen it? Because that strikes me as integral to the process. Yeah, I was just fucking with you. Uh-huh. Okay, well, there is that. There's that. <laughs> and and, and in, in that, I, I, I drew some enjoyment, and, you know, that was the the life. It wasn't actually in the painting. It was in, in the... Uh, in the dealing. Right. Okay, yeah, uh, that's, that's fair enough. That's That's fair play. So I'm going to leave you to, uh, to to wrap up this um, video that I've managed to turn into a clusterfuck for you and uh, go and maintain my TARDIS. I'll be back in a moment. Okay. While he's pissing, I'm going to read the rest of this letter. Um, so it says, when you see me paint in color, a bit more skill is involved. And at most, I give myself... A 2 out of 10 for actual talent. Right? Especially 
uh, low in the realm of painting. Um, not really the medium that I am accustomed to. I'm in a world where um, I have no good background to draw from, except for uh, exporting some talent from other mediums and putting it into this medium. So, yeah. And I give myself about a 7 out of 10 for marketing and selling techniques. Um, and I do feel more pride in that. Uh, I, I know I've said it in, in a different video that I sold 39 paintings in December. Um, I did go the first three days of January without selling a painting, but today uh, I sold a painting uh, and I think two on the fourth and none on the fifth. So three in the first six days of January. But it's not Christmas season anymore. And my my point in 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 measuring things like that is that there are a lot of people who collect a lot of their own artwork and call themselves um, professional artists like like it's their trade when yeah they're artists in the sense that they're making art and art that is better than mine and art that is original yay but there's that other thing that I like doing which is selling and I wish that uh, more people would um, have as much joy in that aspect as I do, but instead they like to um, see if they can try to undermine the integrity of someone's uh, talents by spreading rumor. Back to the letter. I said, uh, oh, and 90% of what I paint is unoriginal and ripping off someone else's ideas. Um, I paint recognizable celebrities, cartoons, uh, movie characters, and uh, th these were not my original idea, um, and I paint them because they sell. And I am a sell-out, and I, I wear that term proudly. Um, and then I told this person that wrote me that, um, thanks for being a loving friend, but anyone spreading the truth about my lack of talent is, uh, just echoing my own sentiment, and, yeah, that's already been on my YouTube channel, spread out for the, the whole world to hear, but, yeah, some people are just, uh... Not paying attention? Well, they're very motivated to pwn, you know. They want to think that uh, somebody is keeping a secret about something. Really? And, and, and that they're exposing the secret, you know. Really? Are, are internet points that rare nowadays? You, you know how to get an internet point? This, this is how you do it. Pay attention. It's no, easy. No, you, what you do is you put the term atheist into the YouTube search bar and and hit search and then you you sort by only videos that happen today and you will find a brand new person who has a brand new uh, stupid idea about what it means to be one of those and you can get uh, an internet point every day probably for the rest of our lives you can probably do that by putting in the keyword Christian or Muslim or Republican, sorry, or Democrat. Well, especially Muslim. Or Islam. Yeah, that that would be... Obama, even, for crying out. Um, chemtrail. There you go. There's a good one. Hmm. Yeah, and I don't have to look past my own subscriptions sometimes um, to find something that I disagree with. And uh, just this week, I had watched a video where somebody equated 
um, saying that you are going to pray for someone with uh, rape. And I disagreed. What? Yeah, yeah, I disagreed, and I felt like, uh, you know, I'm going to defer to Inventor Gorilla to handle this one because I, I feel confident that Inventor Gorilla knows what to do. Um, yeah, it was it was a very uh, harsh uh, equating uh, and, and false equating, in, in my opinion. But, you know, you can com compare and contrast any two things and find at, at least uh, homonyms in order to to uh, really connect the two, like Lincoln and uh, JFK, you know, mm -hmm. one uh, born in Monroe, Maryland, and one did Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, you know, it's uh, yeah, you you can draw parallels with, you know, people who get raped don't want to be raped, and people who you say, I'll pray for you, uh, many times don't want to be prayed for. But, uh, yeah, the length that this guy went to to uh, really search for, for that lasting connection, I thought was off, because uh, you can't tell people what to do when they go to the privacy of their own homes, if they want to pray for you, that's not rape. If they're in, in their own home and they they've you know decided you know, they said that they're going to pray for you and you said no, don't pray for me. If they go home and pray for you anyways, they're just you know exercising their freedoms, and you have no right to tell them you know, when you go home, don't you dare uh, mentally wish me well with with magic wishing. You know, it's... Oh, please. <laughs> if, if somebody wants to go home and paint a picture of you and masturbate to it, they are not hurting you. No. You know... If someone takes a picture of you out in public and then goes home with that picture and masturbates to it, they're not hurting you. They're not. You do, you do realize that you are um, making a case for certain types of uh, despicable porn. Despicable porn? What's, what's despicable porn? Well, for example, pedo porn. If, if the child photographs if, photographs of others not of a consenting age what for example okay one of the one of the things that um, we quite rightly um, disapprove of in our society are people that prey on children yes don't we yeah okay so apply what you just said yeah, and instead of it being a photograph of you, it's a photograph of somebody's child. Not quite so clear cut then. No, it isn't it? clear cut. But I'll say that in the case of of someone snapping pictures of someone that uh, should be protected or just doesn't want their picture taken at all. The, yeah, well, the, the, the harm know, the comes. Disadvantaged, vulnerable adult, for example. Yeah, the harm comes when the the images are shared between networks of of sickos and stuff. But I I would argue that uh, when somebody goes and takes a picture of a girl in a bikini on a beach and then goes home and and, and jerks off to it, um, you know. Well, that's not creepy at all. It it is very creepy, but did did somebody get hurt if not even the person who had their picture taken knows about it? If it's just the okay. creepo whacking off. And now it sounds like you're making an argument for stalking. 
<laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, do you want your video back? No, no, and, and I'm, I'm going to go further and say if Inventor Gorilla's bald goatee-free face where he had to shave his beard off, if that looks like a mangina to me and it gets me hard, if I, if I just, you know, wank right in the privacy of my bedroom He's not getting hurt by that. No, but you still need help. Maybe. <laughs> but you know what? I don't think I do. I think that I've drawn this this perfectly valid correlation between his no, what? his hair free face and things that attract uh, me and, and arouse my boner. No, what you've done is you've painted a picture so graphic that the poor members of your audience that bother to wade this far through the audience are going to need years of eye bleach to compensate for. Yeah. And, and I, I think that if, if somebody was trying to stay on the serious track because they were looking to just argue with me about something... I did touch on something there where those who uh, were sharing the rumor that I'm a horrible artist, which is actually, uh, in my opinion, the truth that I'm a horrible artist, um, the, those people were probably looking for me to expound upon, without going into, into that graphic stuff, the, the whole uh, liberties thing that I was just talking about. You know, because the same people who would be at odds with me for for the previous art arguments that I've made probably also um, think that you know even if uh, a, a tree falls and and nobody is there to hear it, that it still makes a noise. You know, whereas I think uh, yeah, it might make a noise, but who fucking cares if no one was there to hear it? You know. Well, it's like the unobserved supernova, isn't it? Are those elements still created? Being the product of a third generation sun, one well, would have to conclude that they are. I also would, would say it, uh, no victim, no crime. It, it's it's a thing. If if there's a, a crime to be cried about, and there's no victim, then that crime is mala prohibita and not mala in se. It's it's only a crime because somebody said so, not because it's wrong in and of itself. If there's no victim, and and I'll extend the, that victimhood to things like the environment could be a victim, okay? But if there's absolutely no victim, if you're just, you know, wanking to Inventor Gorilla's face, which, you know, he doesn't know about if you do it. Well, he does now. He doesn't know when you're doing it and how many times you've done it and, and all that. And... And he will probably just laugh this off as as an example that I used. You know, he doesn't think I'm serious. No. Basically, if if there's no victim, there's no crime that should be a crime, in my opinion. And there are probably people. Uh, who do not share my philosophies of life that also didn't like the previous things that I said about art and they will probably be rawr. probably and well then there's probably some people that would go rawr 
if you just made a video saying, Hi, my name's Agent of Doubt. I like women. You think they would argue for my gayness? I'm sure that there are some people out there that would attempt it, yes. They're probably going to use this video as proof, aren't they? It's a possibility. Fuck me right. And as you know, once it's on the internet, it's there. It's indelible. Shit, you're even... You're, you're even participant in that policy. I did it again, didn't I? I made you think. Yeah. I'm sorry. There was a song that I, I was thinking about. Uh, the song is by Tool. And one of the lyrics says, I, I sold out long before you ever even heard my name. And... Uh, yeah, now I'm thinking about a couple other songs. Uh, one of which was a song by the Bare Naked Ladies. And oh. it's called One Week. Right? And it was like their biggest hit. And mm -hmm. it, it, during part of it, the, the lead singer is singing about um, the cartoon Sailor Moon and how it makes him think the wrong thing. And he says things very quickly in this song, so it's it might be easy to miss the first uh, five or six times you hear the song, but when it pl gets played a hundred times a week over and over again, um, you, you start to pick up on the lyrics, and I felt like that was, uh, on, on that artist's part, an admission that he was getting aroused by cartoonized versions of little girls that were they uh, real girls if, if it was live action he would be a pedo but instead he's a cartoon pedo well the day that um, it becomes apparent that uh, real cartoon uh, entities are being um, abused in real life then I shall worry about um, cartoon abuse it's called hentai Brian yeah and those cartoons are being abused they don't know it but uh, people are, are wanking to them at home also there, there was a, another song by a very popular band called Sublime and the song was called The Wrong Way and I'm pretty sure it was a song that was an admission of feelings for a girl that was underage and many of the, the people that, that uh, might say oh well there, there's that exception to what you're saying and and that uh, you know people who, who photograph uh, little boys and then go home to spank to it and they're doing it without the permission of the boys that they photograph those are those are the exception to that that statement that you're saying and you're a horrible person because you didn't believe any caveats in I'm saying you know what there are dozens of unchecked pedo sentiments in our culture that people rock out to that people will put in their iPod and listen to over and over the fuck again and then they they will uh, you know they they will watch heroes where they're like kill the cheerleader right that fucking cheerleader was just eye candy for fucking 30 year old pedos okay much like everything else in fucking Hollywood and as soon as women hit a certain age, they pretty much lose their careers in Hollywood because they have to look like teeny girls. 
in order to get any work. You know, and then for me to say, you know, it's not hurting anyone. You know, people might jump all over that and say, oh, it is hurting people if they don't, even if they don't know. You know, I think the, the point where it hurts them is, is where they find out or, you know, when it gets shared behind their back. If one person takes one photo of anything and then takes it home and doesn't share it and just uses it for his own pleasure, whatever that pleasure may be, I don't think it's hurting anyone. Anyone at all. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I want to say that that's one of the reasons why I like wearing a beard, Brian. And I like that you wear a beard. I because... don't wear a beard. <laughs> are, are you about to teach me proper English, Brian? If I was to wear a beard, I would be able to take it off, wash it, dry it, put it on, maybe change it for a different colour, different shade, different style every now and again. Just like I do with every other item of clothing that I wear. Yeah, I was thinking about uh, getting uh, Inventor Gorilla uh, a beard that he could put on, you know, on the weekends. Yes. Yeah. The verb you're looking for is to sport. You sport a beard. Ah, okay. I was thinking about, uh, you know, getting a big furry Merkin from the Merkin store for IG, for his face. Oh. Okay. So, yeah, that happened. <laughs> Yeah. I I imagine that somebody's going to come up with the argument that uh when when you find the person that takes the the private pictures and then uh takes them home and and th they're at that stage where they're not hurting anyone, that's the person that will escalate. So the reason why we have that as a law is because we're trying to catch all those people before they escalate to um, being a little bit more than not hurting people, you know, and then becoming child abductor rapists. So, preventative behavioral control. Yeah. And that, that's why I think it's uh, illegal. You know why, uh, you, you, you know you're now starting to sound like you're making um, a case for thought police. I think it's illegal because we've decided as as a culture that in this case it's okay to be thought police because we might be preventing actual harm. Or is it more a case of mala prohibita and we can only act retrospectively with regards violators of that prohibition? It is mala prohibita, and it's mala prohibita because we we think we are preventing actual crime from happening. We we are creating this special thought police is okay in this circumstance because we've decided to give up a little bit of freedom for a little bit of security. No, we haven't. What we've done as a society is that we've decided that these behaviours are intolerable and if you pursue them then there will be uh, consequences. And this is why the police will not act preemptively. They can only act when there is a crime that has been committed. In other words, you can't prosecute somebody for thinking about rape or intending to rape. You can only prosecute them for the actual event itself. Post hoc, if you will. Well, I'm going to make the argument that somebody 
snapping a photo of someone that they shouldn't have by law and then taking it home and wanking to that photo is thinking about rape. Yeah. And some of, some of their thinking is thinking out loud. Okay, with liberal excusing for the metaphor. Hmm. I want some cookies, Brian. Yeah, I'm wondering how we're going to get this back onto the topic of art. We left that a long time got, ago. Because we've gone way down the rabbit hole here, Mike. I know. We're, we're at 46 minutes. That's not bad on the seven minute video. Yeah. I I I told you that I was only gonna talk for seven minutes, Brian. Yes, you did. You know you know where we went off track? Your whole TARDIS mission thing that you went on. Where I actually deliberately gave you the room to wrap up the video and bring us back onto track. Yeah, but then when you came back, I was trying to wrap it up and you interjected. Oh, so it's my fault again. Cut. <laughs> Cut? Yeah. Okay, well... Supposed to hit the stop record button at that point. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs>